one point I am going to mention is, and we will get back to Tyrone, don't worry about that, anyone listening, but we have to touch on Mayo and maybe what was a little bit of a disappointing performance. And a lot's been said about it. And Joe Brawley, who writes a column in The Independent, he came out and probably the hype, the most critical anyone's been of this Mayo side over a number of years, and he continued it. He said, it was an embar- it was embarrassing and enraging, even if it was inevitable. The shame is that with a high performance culture based on merit, Mayo could be so much more than this. He said he got a text from Pat Gilroy on the final whistle. It said culture. That's in the independent. I go to you, Dan, because uh, we've talked a- about this before. And when we saw at the game in the All-Ireland semi-final against Dublin, when Aidan O'Shea came off, it was kind of a, you know, this is the changing of the idea. James Horn, James Horn is bringing a new approach to it. But Saturday kind of saw a few of their old problems rear its head again. And, you know, in one way, Joe Brody is incredibly harsh. But in another way, there could almost be a little bit of merit to what some of the points he's saying, even if he does go over the top. Yeah, I just want to make an important point. The reason we're kind of talking about Joe Brody and everyone's like, oh, you know, don't be giving him the airtime. But he does have a national uh, column in this in the Sunday papers. And to kind of make some personal attacks on Aidan O'Shea and a few others, it's... It's 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 a sort of like trumping trumping kind of like you know like building the base and then let the social media lads take care of themselves and then they'll start doing the real abuse say no shade do you know what I mean on the social media side of things so I think what Joe stands for and the independent is is pretty pathetic to be honest with you I also think the way he kind of decides to just have this attack on Mayo for the last eight or nine years it's almost like he's waiting in the long grass for him to to do this and you'd swear the way he goes on that he won every single all Ireland he ever played and like in all fairness um and I, I thought he had a few attacks on James Horn too they were one of the two he decided to pick out he couldn't really pick on Kenny O'Connor this year because he was injured so I don't really like like there are kind of some merits to what he's saying and he's actually a great writer and he writes some good pieces but I, I I'd love to see his phone because I doubt Pat Gilroy texts him <clears> and I know he's been caught out in the past lying about Michael Darren McCauley and stories and stuff like that so the reason we wanted to bring up Joe Brawley is I don't I think like because it was the talk on the Jurors sideline Sunday morning and everyone's like oh Joe spot on Joe spot on I, like these are amateur players that are giving a lot of work to and I, I accept you can call someone out for a poor performance but to kind of just like brush you know paint Mayo these Mayo players on on the same brush that they're just not they just can't do it on the big day like there were mistakes made and Aiden O'Shea didn't have a good game again like he did in the semi final but. Like Tommy Conroy is two on. There's a two on one. Tommy Conroy's got a goal chance, right? And he shoots way too early. Now, if he pops or solos that ball, do you know who's waiting inside the square to score a simple goal? It's Aiden O'Shea. So, like, he scores that goal. They're they're a point or two up. It's a different game. So, like, I think people need to kind of be careful that they just kind of paint Aiden O'Shea as an automatic bottler. We're very like linear. It's either black and white. It's either Aiden O'Shea's really bad or he's he's a bottler. And some of the stuff written on social media is disgraceful. From people that should know a lot better and i accept that not everyone is is that is saying that on social media people are right to call out his performance but there i have seen some dreadful stuff it is an amateur sport at the end of the day whatever about premier league footballers which are, who are also human beings but you know uh, you know there's some consolation that they're getting a few bob at the end at the end of every week ga players don't and they have to play like these lads have to play club championship in two weeks so um i think joe brody's kind of the leader of that and um uh, I'm not a fan of it, to be honest with you, but I accept there may be one or two elements of truth in what was a very disappointing performance again from Mayo in an all Ireland final. Right. John, I'm going to go to you now. I, uh, I don't know if you spend the whole podcast talking about the merits of, of what Joe Brodie's writing about, considering you know the success of Tyrone and nothing should be taken away from that. But just maybe on the point of Brawley and what he's trying to get at with Mayo, I mean, did you see some of their old failings come out again and, and just that, inability to just quite get it done and now it you know it, it, it's happened in other sports before teams get into the final and they just can't get over the, that line you know sometimes the bridesmaid and mayo currently they just can't can they no sean they definitely can't and i suppose look in relation to joe Brawley's comments and i was saying to Aaron earlier on it, it's worked because look the three of us are talking about it here now and you know what he's wrote in the independent it's an instant reaction and look He's the kind of fella who just loves the reaction and he's got it. He's absolutely got it. And like I was saying it Darren area on, of course, like, you know, he was he was probably kicked out by RTE. He'd no uh, work for the championship error, obviously uh, didn't have any rights for the championship. So he just, he just wasn't there. So what does the Irish Independent do to get him on board? Paper doesn't refuse ink and he writes what he wants. 
because of his title, because of his followers, and he will get a reaction. People clicked into it. Daniel, you sent me the link there this morning for the article. We all had a good read of it. A lot of the below the belt kind of stuff. But as you were saying, Sean, you probably would kind of agree with maybe certain aspects of it. You know, it is kind of hard to feel sorry for Mayo because look at we were saying off air how many chances do you want to win in All Ireland? Saturday was an absolutely ideal chance. It's all going to be hard luck stories. It's going to be he he didn't do this. Aidan O'Shea didn't do that. Tommy Connery should have got the goal. Ryan Donahue should have scored the penalty. It's just all these failings. You're in an All Ireland final. You need to take every chance you get. And unfortunately, Mayo, I don't know, was it the 10th or 11th time of asking, just didn't get over the line in recent years. So I, I don't, to be honest, it's, it's, it's so hard to feel any real sympathy because, you know, it's past it's past failings, it's past, past mishaps, everything that went with it. They just weren't good enough on Saturday. And I suppose, I know Joe was a bit over the top with some of his comments. I, I think the headline obviously drew, drew people in. As I've seen to you, Aaron, earlier on, Mayo fans, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of them. They're obviously not going to take that lightly. They'll get in contact with Joe. They'll be given out. But at the end of the day, Joe, he has that platform. The, the independent have obviously gave him that platform to say whatever, whatever he likes. The independent is going to be bought. bought. People's going to buy it. Subscriptions are going to go up. So uh, Mr. Broly's laughing all the way at the bank, boys. Mm, and I suppose, you know, we've we, we mentioned rally but maybe your take on on mayo and why they just could not get over the line and we did speak about you know potentially could their back line be opened up and specific or specifically in that second half when they were kind of chasing the game i think a lot of their problems did come back to haunt them and there was, you know there's that chance for for Derek Hanneman. he was a good force a good save out of henny but that whole play and the build-up to it just felt like you know mayo were out of control and they just they didn't have a grip on the game would would you kind of agree with that yeah, like um, obviously when you were mentioning Joe Brawley there and his article, I suppose one of the the points he made that I'd agree with was obviously about James Horn and some of his his in game decisions. Like you were mentioning there, like Mayo's full back line getting opened up and taken off Podrick O'Hara. I just didn't really understand the reason behind it. Like I, I thought, oh, it must be an injury at the time or, or something must be wrong there. Maybe there was like, and we we just don't know that information. But it was a very strange one to take him off because he was probably one of the best players on the pitch uh, against the Dubs. Fair enough, in this game, you know, I thought he was having a good game, but obviously Tyrone were getting a lot of joy and Darren McCurry was obviously having a brilliant game. Um, and, and yeah, like like what Daniel said, I'd, I'd agree with his sort of view on, on the Joe Brody incident, just kind of um, getting back to that. But in terms of Mayo, like in general, like it is just a, it's, it's a mad story, to be perfectly honest, and I can't really like get my head around the fact that, you know, it's been 11 finals they've lost now since 1951. Like to put things into perspective, like if they had a one, probably half of those finals, they'd be third in the role of honor for the most all Ireland wins, like more all Ireland's than Mead, for example, more all Ireland's than, than, than Cork. So it's, it's a mad one to be, to be perfectly honest. And like, they're like, they have a lot of very, very good players and they seem to do a lot right leading up to the finals, but it seems to be in the finals that they seem to, to struggle and, like sliding doors moment really the the Ryan O'Donoghue penalty hits the post and it's a few minutes later obviously that uh long ball gets played in and, and Colin McShane gets there ahead of Henley puts it into the back of the net so like I feel like from a from a Mayo point of view it, it's such a, a tricky subject and a difficult one to speak about because like they aren't a million miles away but at the same time we could easily be all sat here next year discussing the same thing after they lose to Kerry in the final or, or something like that. And I think that's the the sort of the bizarre situation that Mayo have found themselves in over the past couple of years. The last thing on the Joe Brawley, he preaches that it's, you know, it's all a bit of fun kind of thing. That's his vibe and we shouldn't take any games too seriously. So I think he kind of really contradicts himself when he's kind of doing those sort of personal attacks. But on the Mayo side of thing, it is, it isn't, you know, it's definitely playing on their minds 100% because they had enough chances to beat around there. That's a fact. And they, they didn't get it done. And we were just waiting for the comeback and it just never materialised. So the only thing I would say is it is a new team. Like Aiden O'Shea, Lee Keegan aside, there are a lot of young players that haven't lost that many All-Irelands. You would find it hard to believe judging by the performance there the last day. But like some Matty Ruan who had who just had a shocker, like an absolute my pick from around the match. He just had one on, you know, he, they did some job with him like, so you'd, you'd have hopes that the, these sort of players will come back. I wouldn't rule out another tilt next year, but uh, they're definitely not finished, but it's definitely playing on their minds. But like, it just seems to be like constant mistakes with me over finals. Like, like missed opportunities. Like Conor Mortimer said about a year ago, you can't coach human error. 
like O'Donoghue misses the penalty, Tommy Conroy misses a, a really good goal chance, and I think Aidan O'Shea even had a great chance for a goal as well in the first half. So mm. you just you keep beating that drum of, oh, yeah, geez, why he didn't get over the line? Why did they do this? Throne took their chances. Colin McShane got the goal. Darren McCurry got the goal because Throne were far more cuter up front, better ball players, and Mayo just scuffed their chances. And just on that, like the, the three goal chances you mentioned, John, Connor Loftus missed the, the worst of them all. Do you know what I mean? In the first half. So there you go. That's four guilt edge goal chances. And if one of them goes in, it's a, it's a different ball game, 100%. But they didn't. And Tyrone took their chances with the better forwards. And that's what Mayo did against Dublin. They took their chances. So I think some of their failings just maybe came back to haunt them. But 